Welcome back. In this video, we're talking about the number one psychological block to overeating. And this video is a refilm from three years ago because I've learned a thing or two since then because actually we're all different and the number one block is gonna be different for, for everyone. So I'm going to talk about the number one block and then I'm gonna talk about a couple others that may come in a really close second. And for you, maybe those are number one for you. So we're gonna dive into it with plenty of examples. Really quick before we get started, my name is Carrie. I'm the creator of Psycho Spiritual Wellness and that is a path to feeling normal around food without any diet or exercise advice. It's all about psychological and spiritual practices because the inner work is the part that matters. I have refilmed this video several times already because this topic is so important to the work that I teach that I just really want to do it justice. So we're going to talk about the number one block. I'm going to illustrate it with three really good examples that all come from my workbook, why we do the things we do. And then I'm going to talk about those two other things that come in a really close second, but maybe they're number one for you. Let's get straight into it. The biggest psychological block to overeating could be somehow getting a greater benefit from overeating than from being your natural weight. I know this sounds preposterous. If you told me this six years ago, I would have rolled my eyes and said, yeah, maybe for them, but that's not me. So that's why I'm going to illustrate it with examples. I'm going to use examples starting from perhaps not necessarily shallow, but from more shallow-ish things to some quite very deep things. So the first example is having fun. You know, I don't know if you've seen my video on hedonic eating, eating for pleasure, I'll link it down below, but if we do not get joy from our lives, we will compulsively seek it through food. And for some of us, we're so dang busy, single moms, business owners, etc. I'm looking at you. When we are so legitimately busy that we genuinely don't have time for joy in our lives, we have to get it through food. And if you're on a diet and all the fun foods are off limits or even worse, if you think you can't have those foods once you're thin, you're not gonna wanna get there. What kind of life would that be? If you think that all your fun foods, all the most delicious foods, you can't have once you lose the weight, once you reach your natural weight, if you think you can't do that, why on earth would you want to get there? So that's just one really simple example. Humans need joy. If you are not getting joy from your life, you will compulsively seek it through food. And if you think that once you reach your natural weight, once you quote unquote lose the weight, if you think you have to eat like an angel and never enjoy a fun food for the rest of your life, you're not going to want to get there. Really quick side note, you're about to hear a garbage truck in the background of my video. And even though I filmed this many times afterwards, none of them were as good, so please pardon the sound of the dump truck outside. So now let's dig a little deeper to something that maybe is a pain point that a lot of you may relate to, but nobody wants to talk about it because this is such taboo. Maybe one of the benefits that you're getting from having a tumultuous relationship with food is retaining some of your friends. You know, it, this is gonna resonate with some people and it's gonna not resonate with some people. For the people who it resonates with, maybe you have friendships that are built upon the shared commiseration over the weight struggle. Maybe you have friendships that are built on that shared bond of struggling with weight loss. And if you suddenly were to be without that struggle, maybe you're worried that that friend is not gonna feel comfortable around you anymore. Maybe you're worried that that friend's gonna judge you. Maybe you're worried that you're gonna become a different person. Maybe you're worried about X, Y, Z, but the bottom line of X, Y, Z is that you might lose a friend or two or many. Again, this is gonna relate to some people and it's not gonna relate to others, but this is a very real psychological block to overeating. This is a perfect example of how struggling with overeating can give us a positive benefit. I know it sounds preposterous when all you want is to be free of the struggle with overeating. The idea of getting something good out of it sounds preposterous, but if you are someone where you have connections with friends built upon this, 
built upon the shared commiseration, then it could be one of your blocks. Seriously, garbage truck, really, at the very end. Okay, the third example of somehow getting a greater positive benefit from overeating than from being without the struggle before I dive into the other two things that are maybe tied at a close second is procrastination on doing the thing that scares you. So if you have a deal with yourself, once I lose the weight, then I'm going to X, then I'm going to start my business, then I'm going to get a new job, then I'm going to start job hunting, then I'm going to start dating again. All these scary things that ultimately may bring us to a better place, but we're procrastinating on them because they're scary. And if you have a deal with yourself that once you lose the weight and somehow get the imaginary armor that we think it's going to be, which spoiler alert, it is the opposite of armor. It's even more vulnerable because when you're not overeating, you're more exposed to the authentic emotions of life. You're not going to want to get there. If these things genuinely scare you, if you're, procra you're procrastinating on them for a reason, which again, this is gonna resonate with some people, others it won't, but if it resonates with you, think about what it's doing psychologically. If you are on the hook for this thing, once you lose the weight, you're not gonna wanna get there because it's scary. And we can't get rid of that block until we're aware of it. So all three of these examples are things that come up in my workbook, Why We Do the Things We Do, which is my workbook on stopping self-sabotage that will help you identify the limiting beliefs that fuel self-sabotage around food. It is my best seller. It has been ever since I released it three years ago. I hope you will get a copy and put pen to paper, you will write things that you had no idea you think. As Joan Didden once said, and I apologize if I'm saying her name incorrectly, I don't know what I think until I write it down. There's magic pen and paper. Now, let's quickly talk about the two other blocks that come tied in a close second, which for you might be number one. So the first, or should I say second, but maybe first for you, is the psychological effect of restricting certain foods. So if you're someone that is trying to restrict carbs and sugar, then you're creating a heightened desire for carbs and sugar. There are clinical studies that have shown that restricting specific foods creates a heightened psychological preoccupation with those foods. The more you make the cookies off limits, the more you think about the cookies. And when you think about them more, the chances of you reaching for them are so much greater. And so that's why I'm a huge advocate for giving up dieting, allowing all foods, stop creating the forbidden fruit effect around food. When everything is allowed, those things eventually lose their shine. It's not a linear process. I highly recommend watching my video on the stages of giving up dieting so that you know roughly what to expect. And finally, the third psychological block to overeating, which may be number one for you, is not eating enough. And if you think there's no way I'm not eating enough, I'm struggling with overeating, I'm struggling with gaining weight, this doesn't apply to me, just keep an open mind, pretty, pretty please. Because diet culture has shamed us out of eating. I cannot tell you how many of my clients are like, no, I'm for sure, very sure that I'm eating enough. And then when I hear what they've eaten, they eat like an Egg McMuffin for breakfast, skip lunch, and then have a chicken breast with broccoli for dinner, and then they struggle with binge eating at night. And it's like, can you even call it overeating though if you're just reaching a normal caloric amount? It's not overeating, it's just eating. I'm not a dietitian, I'm not a doctor, I'm not qualified to tell you how much to eat, but I know for a fact that you deserve to have more than an Egg McMuffin and a chicken breast and broccoli in a day. So just keep an open mind because the reason why I'm adding this to this video is because it is psychological, right? Psycho-spiritual wellness is not about diet or exercise, but when you restrict your diet so severely, 
you trigger hormonal changes in your body that motivate you to eat because your body is wired to survive. And if your body believes there's food scarcity, there's a famine, it's going to create biological changes that motivate you to seek out food and eat it. So it becomes psychological at that point. We start to think about the breads and the sugar and the cookies because our brain is motivating us to think about these things because it wants us to eat it because it wants to survive. So just promise me that you'll keep an open mind and pay attention and make sure that you are actually eating enough. And the fourth thing, which again, may be number one for you is buffering negative emotions with food. This one's really obvious, so I'm putting it at the end. It's super simple, but hard to practice. The stop, drop, and feel helps with this. So when we turn to food, when we feel sad, lonely, anxious, stressed, or procrastinating on something that scares us, food offers a way to buffer those emotions. And so it becomes a bit straightforward in that the positive benefit of overeating the psychological block to overeating is buffering those negative emotions. And the stop, drop, and feel is what will help with that. So it's up to you to decide which one is number one for you. So keep an open mind, explore all of the tools that I will link down below in the description, and let me know how it goes. Leave me a comment on this video, give it a thumbs up if you liked it, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I will see you guys in the next one.